From downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Fireworks in court. The man caught on camera throwing sticks of fireworks into a church appeared in front of a judge. Why this isn't the only crime he's being charged. Plus, new fears for a community already devastated by Harvey. What's now a hazard even after the storms have passed? Brandon, a lot cooler out around here. We had a cold front come through and the winds creating some minor issues today already looking ahead to the holiday weekend. Oh, are we ever like get through this work week so we can get to the weekend <laughs> one more day after today. And we do want to know, of course, for the Jazz Festival, Ford Arts Beats and Eats, the State Fair and Backyard Barbecues galore, what the weather will be like. First time in a long time that I'll use this word. Tomorrow morning on Local 4 News Today, uh -huh. very early as you Are get you up with us. Are you using a word or is this a whole sentence? I'm going to be chilly tomorrow morning. Oh. Haven't used that word in on a long time. On the first time. day of September. Uh, how about it? Huh. And we can feel the difference in the air today. That cold front I mentioned has come through. Yesterday we hit 82. We are likely going to be about 10 degrees shy of that mark today. Comfortable 65 out in Jackson, 63 in Lapeer, 64 in Pontiac, 70, couple of 70s, Metro Airport, Ann Arbor, also down in Monroe. Need to be concerned a little bit about these winds. They are not the strongest winds that we've seen in a long time, but 10 to 15 or 20 miles an hour from the northeast. It keeps our east siders a little bit cooler today. Also kicks up the wave activity up on Lake Huron, Lake Erie as well. Other than that, just a little bit of a breeze out there and comfortable. The windows are open. We're saving money on that electric bill. 70 to 72 degrees through the afternoon hours. And again, these winds are pounding the shorelines of Lake Huron in our north zone. St. Clair and Sanilac counties having issues with some lakeshore flooding concerns, almost like a storm surge coming off of Lake Huron. We'll talk more about that and we will look into the holiday weekend coming up. All right, Brandon, thank you. Meanwhile, turning our attention to Harvey, there is a new crisis developing near Houston this afternoon after reports of explosions and smoke at a flooded chemical plant. Sarah Dolov has the story from Texas. Rhonda, good afternoon. Harvey still causing chaos as residents within a one and a half mile radius of a chemical plant are evacuated. Reports of smoke and explosions Thursday morning. I heard some popping noise coming from that area, then gray smoke, and then followed by a fire. At the Arkema plant in Crosby, Texas. The company based in France warning of the potential of more explosions. We believe at this point that the, the safest thing to do is to allow the other eight containers uh, product in those to degrade and burn. They say some of their combustible chemicals require refrigeration and the facility has been without power since Sunday. Our team in the site uh, took extraordinary efforts to try to protect the integrity uh, of the products that are involved. In East Texas, scenes of more dramatic rescues following record rainfall. Nursing home residents painstakingly helped to safety. A bowling alley turned into a makeshift shelter, housing about 100 people in Port Arthur. Some 30,000 people have sought refuge in shelters set up across the state. Now officials shifting toward longer term plans. But let me be clear, this mission is going to continue for multiple weeks. Um, understanding that it takes time to mobilize people to, to the transitional shelter assistance program to hotels. As waters recede in the Houston area, officials beginning a grid search for the missing. A difficult task ahead. And taking care of everyone involved in this crisis is a huge undertaking. FEMA estimates they are serving 3 million meals a day and handing out 2 million bottles of water. In Houston, Texas, Sarah Dolliff, Local 4 News. Sarah, thank you. Just days after President Trump visited the and to assess the devastation down in Texas, Vice President Mike Pence is making the rounds today. The vice president and his wife and many others from the Trump administration will see some of the damage left from Hurricane Harvey. The vice president will also be visiting Corpus Christi, that area which was the point of initial landfall for this historic storm. This is the second time that Pence has visited natural disasters ravaged regions. He visited regions of Indiana that were hit by tornadoes in 2016.
Dearborn and Inkster police believe that they have corralled a firebug then arrested a man who went on an arson spree that included lighting a commercial grade firework in the Divine Child Church Chapel in Dearborn last week and more. Local force Rod Malloy joins us now live at yet another location where he allegedly broke out the matches, Rod. Yeah, you know, uh, Rhonda, this is the thing. We found this out this morning that after that divine child bombing, the Dearborn Police Department believes he came over here to the House of Beverage on Cherry Hill, where he placed a firework outside the building here, apparently in an attempt to burn the place down. So he had a busy day that day based on this video, they said. August 23rd, this high definition video from the Divine Child Chapel shows a man entering in the daylight. And though you can't see it, police say once inside, he grabbed a Bible, placed it on the floor, put a great big firework on the good book, and then lit the firework. It startled the woman sitting a few rows away, and she ran from the noise. Dearborn police believe it was this man, 43 year old David Allen Cern of Inkster. They also believe. Later that same night, CERN came to the House of Beverage on Cherry Hill in Dearborn and put another great big firework inside the trash can here. Owner Saivon Zatuna says his video system also caught that on camera. I went back to the camera system and I looked and I thought the same guy who bought the cigarette, he did it. He put the fireworks in there, lighted up and ran away. Dearborn police arrested CERN on those two cases, charging him with felony arson and destruction of property. I reside in the Wayne County Jail. Dearborn police found him there after Inkster police told them about the case against CERN that happened last week in Inkster that led them to arrest him on similar charges for allegedly trying to blow up an Inkster home with a similar firework. Divine Child Pastor Father Jim Bilo offered this about the bombing event in his chapel. So I was just praying that um, whatever his issues are that he will be okay and that we get him the help that he needs. Now, CERN lives with his father actually in Inkster and his father was in court today. He didn't have much to say, uh, but uh, CERN is likely to remain in the Wayne County Jail where he's been uh, living since over the weekend. Uh, and it's because uh, for a couple of reasons. One, he has at least three major felony charges and each of those cases has a minimum of $100,000 cash surety, which means he can't get out on 10%. He needs the full amount. And since he's on Social Security uh, disability and also a military pension of some kind, it's uh, probably uh, likely that he is not going to be able to come up with the full amount of cash in order to be able to get out of jail uh, on bond. And as it stands right now, he'll be back in court in the next uh, week or two on his uh, probable cause hearing. Back to you. And Rod, how were Inkster police able to track him down and arrest him? Well, that's an interesting story, Rhonda. What happened was uh, they had a similar case. The man, uh, they got a phone call from somebody saying a firework had been thrown at the house and that, uh, that no damage had been done. But the homeowner saw the person who threw it, had a description of the car. He called the police. They then remembered uh, the car and started doing an investigation and talking to CERN and they arrested him last week and arraigned him on Saturday in their court with a video arraignment. Fortunately, in all of this, though, nobody was hurt. Oh, you're right. Thank goodness for that. Rod, thank you. Time now for a local four update to a story that we brought you first at 11 o'clock last night. Police say that butane was the cause of a house explosion that happened in Redford on Wednesday night. A preliminary investigation reveals that butane was allegedly used in the processing of marijuana in this home located near Eight Mile and Grand River. We're told that the three people inside had to be transported to a nearby hospital with life threatening injuries. The investigation remains ongoing. And an investigation is underway in Roseville, where police say that a JV soccer coach at Roseville High School has been allegedly sexting with current and former students. We're told that even though the investigation is in its beginning stages, it is believed that the employee may have had contact with other students. According to Roseville schools, the coach is no longer working or allowed on school premises. They're asking any victims that may have been impacted by this coach to contact Roseville police.
The Detroit Public Schools Community District is holding a big teacher job fair today, hoping to fill over 200 open teaching positions in the district in time for the school year. The job fair is from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. this evening at the Ben Carson High School of Science and Medicine. It's located right on Mack Avenue, just to the west of I-75 near all the hospital districts. Applicants are urged to bring plenty of resumes and may get offers right on the spot today. So if you want to have an impact on kids in Detroit, here's your opportunity. If you've lived in Detroit all your life and have always wanted to taste authentic Chicago pizza, well, we have some good news for you. You do not have to go to Chicago anymore to get it. Giordano's Pizza, famous for their Chicago-style deep dish pizza, appears to be opening a downtown Detroit location. A sign has appeared where Bagger Dave's used to be next to Buffalo Wild Wings just off of the Greektown Strip on Randolph Street. This would be the chain's second Michigan location. The other one is in Holland on the west side of our state. Still ahead on Local 4 News here at noon, a bus driver is being called a hero for keeping students safe after this crash. What made that driver lose control? Plus, President Trump hitting the road to kick off his tax policy campaign, where he's expected today and what's all in his tax plan. And the president is responding to North Korea as well. What was done just two days after North Korea flew that missile over Japan that has leaders on both sides making threats. We're back in a moment. It ends. Two days after North Korea flew a missile over Japan, the United States and South Korea staged their own show of force with state-of-the-art mock drills. Two U.S. bombers and four South Korean F-15 fighter jets were launched over the Korean Peninsula. Now Kim Jong-un and President Trump have both issued new threats. North Korea announced over state media on Wednesday that more missile launches are coming and could be pointed at the U.S. territory of Guam. Now, President Trump tweeted his response saying that talking with North Korea is, quote, not the answer. And speaking of the president, he kicked off his campaign to reform the U.S. tax code, saying that he wants to simplify filing and create incentives for businesses to hire. The president made his pitch on Wednesday at a Missouri manufacturing company. He also said that he plans to reduce the corporate tax rate as low as 15 percent, making it more attractive for companies to do business in America. The president also said that he's committed to cutting taxes for middle class families as well. A bus driver is being praised for keeping 21 students on board safe after a terrifying crash. Dash cam video shows the suspected drunk driver in a red pickup truck veering into oncoming traffic and into that school bus. As you see here, the near head on collision throws the hood of that bus up. Police say that they that the truck then rolled and burst into flames. The bus driver kept the kids calm and led them to safety. The driver has been charged with driving left of center and a DWI. Next at noon, an affordable alternative to a retirement home. How granny pods are taking the country by storm. But first, Brandon, no storms around here, I hope. Nothing yet, so we're talking temperature changes. It's only 70 degrees right now upstream, 50s and 60s, a cool night ahead, flirting with 40s for a little while. Next. Soon these halls will. So, how's your Thursday going? Hope it's a good one. We can open up the windows here for a little while, air out the joint. Right? Had a AC on perhaps yesterday and cooler than average or normal today, tomorrow, Saturday. But things improve as we head into Sunday and Monday. So half of the holiday weekend closer to 80 degrees, but we're not going to get a whole lot warmer today. Right now number is 70. Humidity is down to just 55%, so the air is drying out. Northeast winds at 10, barometric pressure 30.16 inches. The barometer is high, high pressure, stable weather, but we do have some stiff breezes coming out of the northeast, gusting every once in a while 15 to 25 miles an hour. We're not seeing a whole lot of gust reports, the occasional burst in the wind, but we do see steady winds throughout the afternoon, evening, and even into parts of late tonight. So from the National Weather Service, a lakeshore flood advisory for Sanilac, St. Clair counties. We could be seeing eight foot waves coming in, danger to boats, docks, and piers, things like that along Lake Huron, and then a beach hazard uh, 
advisory down in Monroe County for just really difficult swimming conditions. It is not great swimming weather, so we're hoping not a lot of folks out there, but 72 breezy and other than that comfortable. Dare I say chilly overnight down to 49 degrees, which means suburbs will likely be even cooler than that. Cold front has come through, keeping Harvey right where it is. Flooding rains in Arkansas down into parts of Louisiana, Mississippi and over into Georgia, and it's slow on the move. It's going to bring some high clouds our way, maybe a few tomorrow afternoon, but more so on Saturday. Tomorrow just 70, but very beautiful to start the Royal uh, the Ford Arts Beats and Eats in Royal Oak. Gorgeous Friday. Saturday again, just high clouds, no problemo. Sunday, we could get a quick little morning shower. That's about it. And then Rhonda, Monday, Labor Day, after the barbecue, Monday evening may get some showers more likely though on Tuesday. All right, looks like the rain timing is perfect, Brandon. Thank you. So we've all heard of these little tiny homes. They have become a hot commodity for the real estate industry in the last couple of years. Even some right here in Detroit. Well, now within that same category, another subset is emerging. It's called the granny pod. Here's CNBC's Jane Wells to tell us all about it. We have a living room, dining room with large windows for light. 67-year-old Jane Baldwin is on the move, making a big change. How's your health? My health is perfect now that I've gotten my second hip replaced. <laughs> Baldwin raised a family in Wyoming, but now her son is raising his own family in Oakland, California, and she wants to be close to help, but not too close. That wouldn't work long term, living with my son under the same roof. <laughs> Instead, she built a tiny 400 square foot house in her son's backyard, nicknamed a granny pod. The Census Bureau predicts one in five Americans will be over the age of 65 by the year 2030, and most of them will eventually need some sort of assisted care. There isn't enough assisted living to meet demand. Have you figured out where everything's going to go? Not at all. So architects have discovered a new niche business, granny pods. The ones that Carrie Shores builds for inspired independence cost 250 grand, which is still cheap for Bay Area housing. Laws in six states now specifically allow granny pods, but in many cases they have to be temporary structures. This one is a permanent one. And because they're so expensive, if it's only temporary, it may not be for everyone. If people can age in place and age at home, it's much healthier and the family's happier, but it can be very expensive. Granny pods can cost anywhere from $100,000 to $250,000. These structures may also raise your property taxes, and then there are the neighbors. In Baldwin's case, I have plenty of storage. Her structure is under 500 square feet, so zoning laws did not require neighbor approval. I looked forward to living smaller. I, I, I just think all of us, but myself in particular, have too much stuff in our lives. Oh yes, don't we? <laughs> it's a great idea. Well, still ahead, taking a dip in the pool just became a lot more dangerous for this homeowner. Wait until you find out what was swimming in one woman's backyard. 100.3. Welcome back, everybody. Talk about starting your day off on the wrong foot for one Florida homeowner when he found a very shocking guest taking a dip in the family pool. Hey, you. Get, oh, wait. Yeah. That guest is actually a seven-foot gator. <laughs> the homeowner called a trapper to get the reptilian intruder out and on his way. The homeowner says that this isn't the first time he's had an unwanted guest in his pool. He once helped get a small deer out of the pool. Obviously this time a little bit scarier and hence the need for somebody to wrangle it out. The gator transported to a nearby farm where it will be held and protected. Yeah, I think I would take a deer over an alligator any day if I had to pick something in my backyard. <laughs> With all of the Harvey news going on, a lot of Florida has also had torrential rains over the last week. Tropical storm like stuff in some spots, so it makes sense that they they're moving all over the place. Yeah, they have some issues and animals affected by that. We want to look though ahead tomorrow, Rhonda. I like it, Brandon. It looks really good. Certainly could be worse. And we've had the Ford Arts Beats and Eats before with very comfortable weather and there is nothing 
like it. I know. Yeah, I mean, you're out there in downtown Royal Oak on the asphalt, so it is nice when the temperatures are cooler. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for joining us.